welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here. I am still in Hong Kong, but I'm actually moving back to the States. And I also want to say that this is our final show for Quok Talk on ThinkTech. Uh, very, very honored to be having the space to talk about all these issues around the world that break boundaries, that make us rethink our positions and to rethink how we place ourselves with each other in society. And with this final show, I have a very important topic that breaks grounds in so many ways. First of all, you know, as a Hawaii destination for tourism, we all know that this is the reasons people go there is for relaxation and for, for vacationing and all that. And you've heard of medical tourism. Medical tourism or for people who actually want to go to a place to seek medical um, examination support, surgeries where they can't do it in their own place or maybe it's more affordable. But what about trans medical tourism? Such a niche area. We need to talk about it and think about why this is relevant and why this is important to discuss. So I have with me two wonderful guests and I shall introduce them right now. First up, we have Dr. Bella von Witzesen with a PhD degree in tourism management from the Hong Kong Polytech University, fully funded by Hong Kong's Research Grants Council. Bella is a passionate researcher and consultant specializing in the realm of tourism and hospitality. Notably, her research interests revolve around community-based tourism, CBT, and diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, through collaborations and renowned, with renowned tourism organizations at international, national, and local levels. Also, she's an experience in providing consultancy services in hotels, restaurants, and hospitals. So welcome so much, Dr. Vela. <clears throat> we have Anthony Wong with a PhD, Dr. Anthony Wong in hospitality management from the Hong Kong Polytech University. Anthony is a passionate researcher and consultant specializing in the realm of tourism and hospitality. His research involves the corporate social responsibility, CSR, and of course, the diversity, equity, and inclusion and organizational behavior. Anthony's expertise in service operations is complemented by his extensive experience in the hospitality industry where he has held various leadership roles. And as a certified hospitality educator, Anthony is dedicated to sharing his knowledge and fostering the next generation of hospitality professionals. With that said, thank you both of you for coming on to Quok Talk to discuss this really interesting and important and undertapped area of trans medical tourism. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. All right. So let, let's kick it off um, by talking about, I think, so we need to talk about the types of medical treatments that uh, trans people go to for um, for support. But, but before that, can we talk about maybe define what gender affirming care is for people who don't understand what trans people need and why there is such a demand for um, medical support and why they don't even have it in their own places? But let's let's talk. Let's define it first. What is gender affirming care? So let me jump into this introduction first. Um, basically, uh, what trans people are looking for are actually to affirm their sex and gender, right? So uh, gender affirming in this sense, it means the external presentation of their gender um, in terms of how actually, um, you know, other people will look at them and at the same time also affirm their personal identity as either male or female, right? So right now, um, we are actually talking about the, the binary gender. Um, let's say, for example, like if you are born as a boy and you feel that you are more comfortable with, you know, female identity, you want to live as a woman, you may transition from boy to a woman, right? Which means like in the technical term, we call MTF, right? So basically MTF, gender affirming care or MTF trans women, I mean, trans people, right? So that is one category. And another one is that if you were born as a girl, right? And then you want to transition as a man. So basically that is another opposite way, which is the FTM trans people. So there are also uh, different types of, you know, medical care for female to male, uh, gender affirming as well. So either male to female or female to male. So basically right now, the existing medical care that we have right now is between these two genders, right? So um, that is the way that we have. But right now, we also have like more and more diversity within our trans community as well. And then, but 
to me, in my opinion, is that um, the industry is still need to adapting to this, you know, um, emerging, um, you know, yeah. identity. Yeah, you say emerging because it is relatively new, this this industry. And let me just back up by saying I just went to Taiwan last month for my medical tourism, my comprehensive exam checkup. And I haven't done that in a long time. And people go, oh, why Taiwan? Some people, oh, they mostly think of Thailand as the place to go to for just the affordable getaways. You know, for many years, I have friends who have gone there for as, as couples even to go and just make it a vacation. Um, and that's the name medical tourism because they try to include a sort of kind of a relaxing, ele uh, entertaining element along with this long, long, thorough examination that nobody wants to do. Um, so that is my understanding of medical uh, tourism. But um, you were pointing out that the gender affirming care for male, female, male, female to male, um, you know, is a very specific procedures that not many places offer. Um, Anthony, do you want to share a little bit also about, you know, also being based in Hong Kong and what your understanding of the trans community is here and what does it um, mean for the accessibility to um, to get support in, in gender affirming care? Uh, yes, as our research, we are focusing for Thailand and uh, Philippines, but at the same time, that would be like we get the understanding about for the predominance in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, definitely that would be like slightly better than the other countries because like in the research area that we focus for Thailand and uh, Philippines, actually they don't have legal recognitions about the gender affirmation. Like in Hong Kong, they will, they need to go through different kind of process that would be like for the psychologists and the treatments and then those kind of like procedures. But instead it would be like, we want to highlight that would be like, uh, Yes, for us, many uh, mainstream medical tours, they're looking for the medical tourism because for the needs, for example, the cost concern, like for many of us, maybe we're going to Thailand, going to Taiwan for different kind of purposes. But for uh, transgender, while they're looking for those kind of medical services, obviously it's because that may not available in the locations. In Hong Kong, we are lucky we still have the availabilities but in some of the countries, like in Philippines, uh, they don't have any availability to getting the uh, gender affirming care services. That's why they are looking for the alternative for other countries. That's why making it more important for this niche market. Yes, as we expected that there will be like increasing number for the transgender medical tourism is growing because for the local, it's not available domestically. That's why, but we also identify that it will be like uh, very important for transgender tourists. Actually, the motive that is quite different with the others, as Bella just mentioned, that will be like gender identity that will be important factors. While we find that it will be like the perceived risk is not the main concern. While many of us, while we're going for the medical tourism, yes, we're concerned about the cost, we're concerned about the safety, but instead, that would be like gender identity or affirming their gender become the most uh, motivations for them. That is making it unique for the medical tourist market. While I think Bella can jump in a little bit for more about for the transgender situation in Hong Kong. Yeah, from what Anthony said is that from what I observe, right? Because I'm not originally from Hong Kong, but what I observe is that. Um, in Hong Kong, the legal recognition is uh, comparable better, I mean, than Thailand and the Philippines because we don't have legal recognition right now, right? But I think the issue is that we have limited facilities. Um, I think we have just a few doctors who are specialized in, you know, hormonal therapy, like who are endocrinologists, you know, or people, I mean, doctors who are friendly to trans people um, because... Mm -hmm trans knowledge about trans people are still quite, you know, uh, in the medical industry is quite, quite limited already. And then for do doctors who actually uh, familiarize about the trans issues are, are also quite limited as well in Hong Kong. So that is actually, one issue. Actually, can you expand on that? Sorry, doctor. Um, the idea of, med you know, the medical expertise that you mentioned, um, how is there a growing so-called studies for trans medical departments around the world because of the movement of more um, trans people who are wanting to do 
surgeries or you know what what are the numbers do we have any research on that um so if we talk about studies right um let's say like we refer back to the general medical tourist first right so they are actually like i'm not sure like the number like anthony maybe you can recap a little bit but the medical industry medical tourism industry right people move around the world like quite a lot like you know the market value is very very high um and then for trans people actually um it's still you know catching up right now because um i think there is no like solid study talking about the market value about the trans medical tourism yet but we are actually have some estimation, right, Anthony? Uh, yes, because from the figures or the study, actually, that would be like every year for the general medical tourism is growing. And we expect that would be like every year they may increase around at least 25% in the total market. And we estimate that it would be like in globally, we do have more than 10 million potential market for the transgender tourists, especially that would be like for everyone, especially that will be like they're looking for better qualities or even for the local availability issues. We expected that it would be like in the world, 10 million that would be the potential market they make going for the medical tourism. That would be like not only for the surgeries, maybe for uh, hormones or mm. for consultations. Right. That's why that would be like making it more important, especially for the general market. Yes, that's growing. But we having uh, exactly that we'll be investigating or getting more understanding about the niche market, especially for the yeah. trans medical tourism market, which is understudied at this moment. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I feel like um, on one hand, there's a demand because there are more people who require or want to have these surgeries. But is there um, are there critiques on the other side saying that people are capitalizing off of trans people? Um, is there something like turning this into a business, you know, because um, in certain places they do, you know, like with the beauty pageants, for example, the trans um, beauty pageants in, in Thailand or, or in other South Asian places, they put a lot of money and resources into their bodies. And so, and also because of the hormones that you mentioned, Anthony, that people need this in order to conti continue their, their identity. And so, is there some kind of tension between the demand for these uh, support, medical supports, but at the same time, people taking advantage of this need? Yes, I, 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 I agree with you. I do think that there is a people who are actually taking advantage on this, right? Because actually transgender medical tourism is quite a cross-cutting issue right now. And then it touched upon several ethical issues as well. Uh, as we know that like we for trans people are marginalized, you know, community. I would I would say like everywhere in the world, right? Even in Thailand or in the Philippines, we are still marginalized because we still face discrimination. We still face social pressure and a lot of expectation, especially if you want to get accepted by the society. You at least need to conform the norms of being a man or a woman, right? And by conforming to the norms, um we need to be perceived as you know according to the gender image so typical gender image of certain gender that we would like to belong to right so there are some kind of social pressure not just only by the mainstream society but even among trans community themselves as you mentioned about beauty pageant from time to time the knowledge about being feminine or being masculine right um has evolved Right, from time to time. In the past, or oh, if you want to be the woman, you need to be pretty, you need to have fair skin, you need to have long hair, you need to have, you know, flawless, you know, um, skin, for example, something like that. So that's why I kind of giving the pressure. And then for trans people, they tend to believe that if they want to be accepted, right, they need to be pretty, they need to be feminine enough, you know, mm. they need to be masculine enough, they need to you know, conform to a certain standard or let's say like beauty standards, right? Yes. And then what I observe right now is that sometimes the beauty standard also influenced by the trend, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and now everyone watching, you know, like let's say Korean drama, for example, they're yes. also emerging yeah. Korean beauty standard, right? So sometimes right. the new, you know, medical tourism destination, people are also looking for to, in order to follow those trends and also yeah. to be accepted in that 
calm moment, right? Like for example, like people are more like now embracing in especially in Asia, we are you know embracing like Korean beauty standard right now. So there yeah, are so many. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Right, women also go to Korea for medical treatment. Everyone, Even... yeah, everybody goes to Korea. I know friends who from Hong Kong who go. All these wives, how wives go to Korea together to go and do like something with their face, right? So if there's such a hype with um, medical tourism in that sense for beauty, like as as you had mentioned, the the trend in Korea's beauty standards, um, that's not criticized, and there's a huge demand for that type of medical tourism. But when it comes to trans medical tourism, again, we're putting in the marginalization, as you had mentioned, that you know why are um, trans people kind of not necessarily forced, but kind of like the way the society works is to try to fit into a norm of one gender and to put all their effort and resources into that just to belong. So there's that element too. And, and that's a lot of um, psychological um, issues and burdens as well. Does the medical tourism for trans people um, include that type of psychological support? Yes, um, actually, I would say that we still do very little in terms of psychological support, right? Because as Anthony mentioned, from our study, we actually evaluate the behavior and also the attitude of, you know, the perception of trans people from Thailand and the Philippines toward medical tourism, right? We actually found that the threat or the risk of medical tourism, or let's say like the medical complication after the surgery, right? people tend to overlook at it, you know, like they tend to not consider those risks as the motivation for considering into like whether they, whether or not they want to make a decision on participating in medical tourism, right? So they tend to mm -hmm. overlook all those issues and then they just, you know, strongly motivated by, you know, um, the beauty standard that what we say mm -hmm. just now, right? Or in order to affirm that gender, in order to fit into the gender categories, right? So in mm -hmm. terms of psychological support, I would say that even myself, uh, or even among my friends, we actually just when we go to see the doctor, right? We always say like, oh, how it's gonna improve my, you know, beauty or something like that. But we tend to overlook what are actually the risk, what are actually yeah. the complications afterwards. And then I think what we can do better is that we need to look into the holistic well-being, right? Let's mm -hmm. say if you've gone through like surgery, especially like sex reassignment surgery or gender affirming yeah. surgery, right? Sometimes it involves a lot of, you know, you know, big operation, right? And then it might have yeah. complications later. So if we know or we are more knowledgeable about this, we are educated about this, we will feel empowered and then we, we will be informed with our, you know, you know, um, well-rounded reasons yeah. to do or not to do, right? So but that how will do you be... gain that knowledge? You need to have a support system. How do you expand on the studies? How do you encourage more practitioners to acquire more skills in this area? You know, what? where are the other areas on the education side and the research side that support this kind of medical tourism? Yeah, so that is still the issue because actually medical industry didn't, you know, prepare that information much to their mm -hmm. client right now, right? So so going back to the issue about like whether someone is capitalizing it, right? So I think for medical professional, they should be able to actually provide those information as well for them to be empowered and then have an informed decision, right? But right now, what we actually refer to are usually uh, looking into the internet, right? That is a very good source of information. And then we need to check, you know, like, oh, what are the, you know, effects, you know, after the surgeries and all that stuff, right? So there is no official source of information mm -hmm. much, right? But um, what we are doing right now is that actually, you know, looking at the internet normally because yeah. that is okay. information that can be very accessible, right? We do have some blueprint, like health blueprint, but yeah. sometimes it's quite, you know, sometimes it's, inaccessible to some people as well because most of them are like in foreign languages like basically english and then people who cannot speak english may not access right. to those information as well yeah so let's that... talk about access i think that's a really important point because language is one issue but what about um resources and it's not cheap to travel right 
So is trans medical tourism reduced to those few that small percentage of people can afford to travel to begin with? You know, and how does that exclude most of the people who need this kind of gender affirming care? Or you know, what what how does that play out in kind of the global tourism industry? Um, in terms of affordability, right, that is also one of the motivation for people to go for medical tourism that are uh, right, um, uh, treat, uh, how to say activities, right? Um, I think for the, how the whole industry is working right now is that people are from you know more developed, you know, uh, places going to like you know developing countries for the medical tourism, right? So basically, their economic level is better. Right, in order to you know participate in the medical tourism, but for trans people, I would say that there are not so many. I would say like if we compare the economic you know situation, I think trans people are still like you know less than the mainstream, right? So basically, right. for people who cannot afford, they may not yeah. be able to participate in medical tourism. So they need to rely on the existing facilities within their own country, right? But the thing right. is that existing facility in their own country sometimes they are very limited right yeah. or even they have it they're available but still it's not up to the quality that they are looking for right, right. so can i just refer back to hong kong what was the rate i think even just to get an appointment to see a doctor if you want to even have um any procedures or even hormonal um support is like months just to even see the doctor for the first time is that right any do you know the numbers or I heard even like six months, like in order to get the appointment just for, for the appointment. yeah, just yeah. an appointment for the doctor. So that is the issue in Hong Kong right now, right? But in Thailand, you, you can just basically like you know go to the hospital directly, just walk in over the counter, you register your you know your name, and then just see the doctor right away, right? So that is a very high discrepancy between destination because mm. um the availability and as well as affordability, right? If you are Hong Kong trans people, um, I think in order to pursue surgery in Hong Kong, it's very expensive. So can we talk about the numbers? What do we, what are, how are we comparing prices for procedures and or are, are the hormones the same amount? Of, is it same cost in different places? I don't know. Anthony, do you have um, those? I'm not sure about the price, but in Thailand, the price very low. For example, in order to get hormones, right? I think for one month, I think we can just pay how much? Um, let me check. Like, that's one hundred Hong Kong dollar per month. You know, oh, in order to get okay. Yeah, except I mean, excluding the medical consultation, right? But just hormone itself, it's like just one hundred Hong Kong dollar. You can sustain your hormone for a month already. Do you but need I to have a doctor? Uh, or you can get it over the counter. Do you need a doctor's letter? Yeah, we obviously we need the medical prescription from the doctors, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I would say that uh, now it's better um, in terms of getting the hormone in Thailand. In the past, we, you know, many people get over the counter. They okay, usually okay. have the prescription, but that is like dangerous, right? But now we have like more knowledge about it. Like we understand more about the complication, like hormones and what is the side effects and all that stuff, right? right. So people are more encouraged to actually consult with the doctor first especially endocrinologists, people just have, you know, check the blood and then see the hormone yeah. level because yeah. different people have different, you know, level of hormone that we need to add on our body, right? So that is something that we should be careful about, yes. So you buy your hormones in Hong Kong because you live here? No, in Thailand. And I okay. ship all. So you can buy online? Is that how it works? So I... So okay, my, personally, I asked my family to help to buy okay. because I used to check my blood before, and then they kind of prescribe me like, oh, this is the right amount for me, and then okay. after that, I just buy hormone by myself, and then sometimes I go back to Thailand and then just take it to right. uh online. But I want to say something about this because sometimes hormones are expensive or not mm -hmm. available, or sometimes even illegal in certain oh. countries. So that's why people go for tourism in order to buy hormone as well, mm. right? So that is another issue. And then people who cannot afford that, they may need to rely on the black market 
like online uh, right and right. then that may be like have some counterfeit medicine you know yeah, or, or, or right. even they you they like someone capitalizing it by mark up the price a lot right. you know right again taking okay. advantage of vulnerable people um we only have a couple minutes left um but i wanted to leave some space for both of you to maybe offer some suggestions based on both of your research because this is groundbreaking to talk about trans medical tourism and um do you have any suggestions for practitioners going forward to improve this industry, to really genuinely support what needs to be supported and to have more knowledge and research support for this. Okay, I may start for one point and better can complement the others. Uh, as like uh, Crystal, you mentioned about the capitalize, that would be the one that we want to highlight, even though yes, we find that would like perceived threats or risk may not the major motivation for the transgender communities. When they decide for the medical tourism, but that will be the human right issue for the practitioners about how they decide for the promotion materials, how they treat, how they decide for treatments or packages. That's why that would be like uh, we are suggesting that is uh, how the practitioner working together but not alone. Because as we say that would be like uh, we also find that while they're getting more knowledge, they have more control power to decide for the medical intentions like medical travel intentions. That's why that would be like, we are suggesting for the practitioner, they may going to have a like standardized platform in order to provide those kind of like ethical standardized information for the transmetal, uh, transmetal tools in order to have those kind of like confidence in order mm -hmm. to get more accurate information and most importantly, accurate and ethical information. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I would suggest that you know, okay, in order to get to know all these, you know, issues, and then it's not just only about medical issues, but it involves a lot of social issues, right? I mm -hmm. think for medical professionals, I think the fastest way to you know be more responsible for trans community, right, is that you can just need to reach out to those you know, maybe NGOs who work on the trans, you know gender rights or, you know, trans uh, health, for example, there are many organizations out there, right, in, you know, I, I would say like in Hong Kong, in Thailand, in the Philippines, right, because we cannot just only emphasize on gender affirm affirmation only. I know that this is important, right, but the medical infrastructure or the knowledge, right, sometimes we cannot cope with some consequences as well. For example, like I have heard like a lot of cases like among my friends after yeah. the sex reassignment surgery some people have a very serious issues and then it lasts for their whole life right yeah. so if people know about this information like then you know compare between pros and cons and then have the very well equipped knowledge you know yeah. you know to make this a big decision and we call this decision exactly. as life change decision right it is so, very careful about this yeah. and then communicate that message you know because yeah. people tend to be doctors right like yeah. if yeah i would say that trans people may even more like believe doctors than the ngos yeah. because you know and so even though they talk about issues yeah. but i want to be pretty i want to be affirm my gender right there's it's a so thing. much um information uh, Dr. Bella, you know, and both of you have given such important research to even have this conversation to already think about. So unfortunately, we're out of time, but just to kind of recap, you know, the importance of the ethical, accurate, and social and mental psychological support. All of this comes together in this industry because we're paving new ground. We're supporting people who need this. And um, I think the world needs to kind of embrace this topic as a part of our whole world conversation. So really, really appreciate your research. Good luck with all of this. And thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th.
we will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.